Father, we thank you for the Sabbath. Thank you for the chance to rest. And now we pray that you please be with us. We ask for your spirit, that you give us peace as we close out this Sabbath and close out this time together. We also wanna pray that you give us wisdom and understanding. As we open your word, speak to our hearts so we can understand your will for us. And your greatest will that you have is that we would know that you love us. And so I pray for that. And I thank you in advance. And we all do together in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right, everyone. We are going to be looking at ingredient labels during Change Health today. So while we're not actually cooking, hopefully what we look at and what we study right now is going to help you in your cooking. So we're going to go to a PowerPoint that I think is going to be helpful for you. And I'm going to ask if we could bring up that PowerPoint um, and share that slide. That way we'll be able to kind of walk along through this together because I have here a collection of products, but the labels on them are gonna come up in pictures here in just a second. While we're bringing that up, I need to do something real quick. If you're watching at home, if you're close to your kitchen, go and grab anything or any item from your kitchen that has an ingredient label on the side. So whether it's a box or a can or a bottle, any kind of packaged food, this is going to help you guide and walk through it. So I know if you're watching this, if you're in the basement or if you're in the living room, run up there, take about five or 10 seconds while we get going and grab something because I want to walk you through how to read the label for whatever product it is you have because there are principles that have been put out by the Food and Drug Administration, by the U.S. Dairy Association, uh, United States Dairy Association, yes, or Dairy Agency, uh, USDA, that allow us to have a uniform way to understand what's in our food. So if you do not have something, we give you about five more seconds, go grab something from the kitchen and we're gonna walk you through how you should read your labels. Now, the reason why this is important, we know what the Bible says, our bodies are supposed to be the temple of the Lord, his presence dwelling within us. And while we wait for the day when we see Jesus, when we'll be made new from head to toe and inside and out, we wanna take care of our bodies, right? And especially in a time where people are getting sick and more importantly, even emotionally sick and spiritually uneased or diseased, we want to make sure that we're putting the best possible food that we can into our body. One way to do that is to know what's in the food that we're eating. Now, here's the thing. All of the foods that you see here are by definition packaged food or processed foods. In other words, they were taken from the ground or they were taken from a tree. They went through some measure of processing and then they were stored. So now we're not dealing with food that came straight from the earth or straight from a tree because it does not have to be packaged. Now, the downside to that fresh food is that its cycle of life ends much quicker because of oxidation, because of germs and other factors that cause the food to spoil, which is no good to us. So somebody had the bright idea and said, well, what if we took food and packaged it so that way it could store longer it could travel further and people will be able to have foods that they may not be available to uh, in their area or where they live geographically. So there are positives to packaged foods, but some of the drawbacks to the packaged food is that that food loses its vitality. It loses its life. So what we want to do when we are eating packaged foods, we want to try and eat packaged foods that have ingredients that can store longer and we don't lose that much nutritional value. Then on the other extreme, you don't want to eat foods that are packaged that have a lot of additives or things put into them that your body doesn't eat in the first place. And one of the tools to help us to do that is to simply look at those ingredient labels. So now let's go to one example here. And I have this uh, up here because this is a packaged food that is here. So if you can guess just by looking at the ingredients, what kind of food is this? All right, what kind, what is this stuff? All right, this is what it actually is. It's a 12 pack of jumbo ice cream cups, all right? So I was trying to go through the pantry and look at something that has an added sugar or, or white sugar added because as a family, we don't have any white sugar, no brown sugar, no processed sugar in the house. So I had to find something that had it in it because that's one of the things that's important to note when you're looking at an ingredient label. When you look at this label, you're going to notice, in addition to all the other ingredients, in addition to sugar, everything that has been put into this product. By law, it has to be put into this list. 
Now, another stipulation of the law is that the way that the foods are listed on the ingredient list, they're listed in the order of what is the largest quantity and then down to what is the least. So most of this particular item, item number one is enriched wheat flour. So that's the highest amount of uh, uh, ingredient by volume or weight or what have you. And then you work all the way down to that, which is the least. And that would be the last thing listed, which in this case is salt. Now, when you are looking at a list of your foods, so you see here, we've got wheat, then it has iron, niacin, thiamine, mononitrate, so forth. Those are additives, but there are additives that tend to be vitamin additives or some kind of um, nutritive benefit. But then there are other additives that are for flavoring. Then there's some additives that are for coloring. Now, that's not going to be stipulated or put into the ingredient list. That's where you come in. That's where if you don't know what it is, you have to go through and say, well, what is this? And you can Google it. And usually on your first tip, you'll find out what the actual item is. Now, earlier at the top, I was mentioning about sugar, right? So if you look at sugar, if you were to count by ingredient, enriched wheat flour, you'll notice in parentheses, that open parentheses, it's telling you what is in that flour. So this is not just straight ground flour. It's flour and it has niacin, iron, thiamine, mononitrate, riboflavin, folic acid. Then you're getting the tapioca flour. So your list is the item. Then in parentheses, if that item is made up of a combination of ingredients, those ingredients need to be listed. And then it goes into the next ingredient in, not the flour, but in this case, in the ice cream cups. All right. So hopefully you're walking through the order of what you see. So it's only at the one, two, at the third ingredient, that's where you get to sugar. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because that's one of our big enemies of our health. It's the number one drug in the world, bar none, because it's legal, it's addictive, and it damages the body. With all that said, that's why I want us to see sometimes in the ingredients, you will see it say sugar. But the fact of the matter is, is that because people are waking up and realizing the danger that processed sugar has on the body, those sugars are being replaced with other types of sugars. Therefore, they're being given other names. So something could have sugar and it not be in the ingredient list, but it's in there by another name. We're going to look at some of those when we go over here and to our next item. Now, this item here is our can of beans. And I got this one because right there on the label, it says brown sugar hickory baked beans in a sweet hickory sauce with brown sugar and spices. Now, sometimes it is like flashing lights and you can actually see what's in the item, right? If you go here and look at the list at the top, fortunately, is prepared white beans. Then the next ingredient is water. And now you see the third and the fourth ingredients. What are they? Brown sugar and sugar, or that we would probably call table sugar or white sugar. And remember, the only difference between white and brown sugar is that white sugar then has molasses added to it and it turns brown. So that's why it tends to be stickier. That's why you can pack brown sugar. It's just white sugar plus more sugar, right? So some people think of brown sugar is healthier for you. Well, no, it's just the color that may appear to be more natural, um, but it's sugar times two. So in this ingredient list, it has everything listed. Now let's talk about something else that you might see on your ingredient labels. And that's there at the bottom, this disclaimer of what it may contain. What's that all about? At the bottom of these beans, it says, may contain traces of milk, eggs, wheat, and soy. Well, the reason is it's not being put in the food as something to make the product, but it could be something that is left over from residue that is being made from something else where this product is being made. So literally in the factory, there may be another set of machines, another set of blades, or even the employees themselves that may transfer these items from one item to another, or I should say transfer the ingredients from one item to another. So to ensure that you can't go back and uh, sue <laughs> or say, well, I thought this didn't have in it, but turns out it does. I thought this was vegan and it was not supposed to have eggs. Well, it was made in a facility that also made something else with eggs and there may be some cross transfer. So unless that food is certified, say for example, something like gluten-free, there's a possibility of transfer. 
when something is certified to not have that additive, it's because the entire process, the entire facility, the whole factory, make sure that none of those additives or those allergens are in that product. So this is a disclaimer that it might be in there, but it should not be in there. So if in my case, I'm a vegan vegetarian and I know there might be some eggs. Or, so I know there's a probability of it. I'm still willing to consume it because it's not overtly or it's not directly put into the food and it's not an allergen uh, in my case. It's a selection of my diet. So that's a, a can of beans to kind of go through that ingredient list. Let's go to another one. Look here at. Uh, all right. Now, this is cool. See if you can guess what this is. And this is interesting because this is actually a health food. It's literally marketed as a health food. This is a nature's bakery, gluten-free fig bar, right? So this gluten-free fig bar. Now, here's the thing. It is natural in that the ingredients may not be as processed, but here is what you got to think about when you think about natural foods. This is where you got to turn that over and read the ingredients. Because just because I call something natural or I slap a tree on it or I put a smiling child on the front, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily in my best interest health wise. Because when you look at this list, for example, this is not really a breakfast food. This is not really something you want to eat as an entree. This is a dessert because what's the very first ingredient? Brown rice syrup. Now, incidentally, of the syrups and of the sugars to eat, brown rice is one of the best ones. Why is that? Because it's a brown rice syrup or a brown rice sugar, it is very low on the level of acidity. Remember, all sugar is very acidic. That's one of the things that makes it so dangerous. And that's why diseases like cancer feed off of sugars because of their acidity. Now, with that in mind, brown rice syrup is, tends to be closer to the alkaline end of sweetness. So it's actually a good sweetener. But you have to keep in mind, there's a lot of it in here because it's ingredient number one. Ingredient number one out of a long list of ingredients. That list includes brown rice syrup, fig paste, and then gluten-free flour. Then we find out what's in the flour. And then it goes into a blueberry jam. Then we find out what's in the jam. And you see what's in that jam? Cane sugar, naturally milled sugar, rice starch, glycerin, blueberries, apple powder, natural flavors, pectin, citric acid, locust bean, gum. So you're getting the picture, looking at the ingredient, and if that ingredient has a combination of ingredients, those ingredients are listed. So you've got to be aware that when you're looking at these names, know what they are. And we talked about sugar, right? And sometimes it's right there in plain sight to say what kind of sugar. But one of the things I've learned over time in trying to minimize our sugar intake Sugar goes by other names, and usually three of them. Anytime you see sugar, that obviously means sugar. But if you see syrup, any kind of syrup, that's going to be a sugar, no matter what it says in front of it. So whether it's a corn syrup, that's corn sugar. High fructose corn syrup, that's a, a sugar that then has been added, has a, um, I believe it's a hydrogen that's been added to make it something even more insidious to your body. Uh, these are things you have to be aware of. Sugar, syrups, another name that you want to look for whenever you're looking for sugars are any word that ends in O-S-E, O-S-E, or an O's, for example, like sucralose or glucose or even fructose, that's fruit sugar. That O-S-E suffix, that's a suffix for a sweetener, a sugar. So even if it doesn't say sugar, it, that is what's actually being used, whether it's artificial or whether it's natural. And then lastly, if you see something that says concentrate, anytime you see the word concentrate, just know that's sugar. So those are like the four red flags. If you're, if you're on the lookout for sugar, the word sugar, but obviously they're maybe co more covert than overt. So you got to look for stuff that says syrup, something that ends in O-S-E, and anything that's a concentrate. That is a type of sugar. So even though this is a health food, you want to eat it in moderation because it's a lot of sugar and it has a lot of ingredients, what may not be bad, but it's just something to be aware of as we work our way down our ingredient list. Let's go to another one. This is the box of Dr. Prager's Purely Sensible Foods. Now, these are gluten-free uh, California veggie burgers. They happen to be on sale, on clearance, actually, at uh, 
Dylan's, which is our store here, similar to like a Kroger, which is uh, the brand that bought Dylan's out. So uh, let's take a look at this um, ingredient list here. Now, here's the reason why I chose this one, because what's the very first ingredient that you see listed there on the list? First ingredient, if you can see there, is carrots. Now, if you actually look at a picture of the burger, it's not orange. It actually has a, a brownish amber type tone, you know, closer to what a, a meat burger might look like. The reason why we say this is because a lot of us when we shop, we just eat with our eyes. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's how our creator made us to eat, to draw us to those things that we would like and that we would need. But the reason I bring it up is because just because it looks like that, number one on there is carrots. So you can't judge what you're about to eat just by the picture that's on the front. The picture is just that, a picture. So it has some creative license to it to where it can accent colors or it could minimize colors, accent texture or, or minimize texture. So that's why you got to get in the habit of not just looking at a box and saying, oh, that looks good. Because when I look at this box, I don't think carrots, but that's the number one ingredient. Now that works out in my favor because carrots are good, but what if it's something not so good and it looks healthy, I can't go by the picture because I don't see carrots here, I gotta find them here. And if you're looking for something in your diet and in your food, don't look at the picture. Read this list, which includes carrots, onions, string beans, oat bran, zucchini. This is good, this is great. And that's why the list is there so that you can know what you're eating. Let's go to the next one. Going to our next item, now we're gonna to go to a can. This is a can item. This is a can of tomato sauce. This is an Aldi Happy Harvest tomato sauce. No artificial preservatives. And that's great. But how do I know that? What I wanna do is go to that ingredient list. Because remember, all this stuff up here is just pictures and claims. The list, that's the legal contract. This is what you put in this before I put this in here. In this case, it's tomato puree. Now, how do I know there's no additives? I see water, I see salt, I see onion powder, garlic powder, citric acid, which is, by the way, vitamin C, natural flavors, and dehydrated bell peppers. So now I'm not just going by the label. I'm going behind the label, literally, and reading the ingredient list to know what is in this item. Now, remember, it's listed from the most to the least, and anything on there or in there if it's usually, if, it's, if, if you're looking at something and it says no artificial flavors, one of the things you should be able to do then with a basic, you know, high school education, eighth grade reading level, you should be able to pronounce everything that's in there, right? If there's no additives or preservatives, because it's not, it doesn't have a scientific name. It's not multisyllabic. So it should be a simple or, you know, maybe a two or three syllable compound word at the most. So that speaks to this is something that's pretty close to what I would make at home or what I would grow from the ground or grab from a tree. So when I'm looking at no artificial flavors, I should then be able to read that label because those are natural or natural ingredients in that product. In this case, this is why this is usually your best bet. This is why we have it over. If you can't grow your own tomatoes or if you can't purchase your own tomatoes, this is the next best thing because it doesn't have all the other things that have been added to most tomato sauces. We'll probably look at that sometime in the future too. Now let's look at this one. Now we're getting to some of our superstars that really go out of their way to communicate that they are natural foods. This is an example of a bottle of natural peanut butter chunky from Smuckers. All right now, all these products, I don't get. We're not getting any money. We're not getting any endorsement from them, and we're not necessarily endorsing them. We're using them as examples. So that in your diet journey and your health fo uh, focus, you know what to look for. All right. So let me just put that little disclaimer out there. So now this is a superstar because look, this is supposed to be natural, right? And when I go back and look at that ingredient label, I see peanuts, salt, end of the game. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so what are you finding? The more natural or natural a product, the fewer ingredients. Those ingredients, because they're simple ingredients, they're simple words. So it's these kind of concepts that you got, you're trying to get used to when you're looking at food. I'm trying to get back to the earth. I'm trying to get back to what the creator has made. And so I'm looking for foods, don't have a long list, and I could say most of the words that are in there. This is a superstar. Now, even though I'm not a big fan of peanuts as opposed to, say, almonds, cashews, walnuts, because remember, peanuts are actually not nuts. They're legumes. That's why 
they grow in the ground. All of the other nuts, they grow on trees. So technically speaking, a peanut is not a nut. And the reason why it's really not the superstar of the nut world is because they also tend to be acidic. Whereas all of your tree nuts, they're basically alkaline. So that's another big difference and why I'm not a huge fan of peanut butter. Um, but this is on clearance for a dollar. And from time to time, Tara will make peanut butter cookies. We got some on hand uh, to eat uh, for dessert. I think I've gone through everything, almost everything. No, no, I think there's one more. No, there's one more. Now, I save this one for last because this is like all open, all out. This is the easiest way and how we really, really want to be looking at our labels. This is a box of gluten-free Nature's Path Organic Whole Oats. Now, the thing about it is that this is going out of its way to communicate to us, one, hey, this is a vegan product. How do you know it? Because it says it right there on the box. Let me explain something real quick that we may not understand the differences because they're getting more tricky in their marketing and labeling to kind of go under the health banner. Something being vegan is not the same as something being kosher. I know some people mistake kosher like here on this um, bag of uh, this big bar. You see there's a kosher symbol, which is a K. Kosher has nothing to do with being vegan. Kosher simply means that the food was made in accordance with Jewish law and Jewish ceremony. In other words, the animal was killed a certain way and there are certain items that are not in that food, but it doesn't necessarily mean that there's not a meat product or there's not an animal byproduct. So that's why don't associate vegan with kosher. Another thing we've got to be more mindful of nowadays is you will see something that says non-dairy or dairy-free. Those are not the same things. Remember, by definition, a vegan is someone who is not eating any meat or animal byproducts, which is the, uh, the diet that we advocate. Uh, and we believe it's the best option that we have going for humanity right now. Now, with that said, something that is dairy-free means that there is no dairy in it. Whereas non-dairy could mean that there's no meat, but something can be non-dairy and have an animal byproduct. Let's use an example. Um, if you see cheese, for example, like a vegan cheese, you'll see some vegan cheeses, it will say dairy-free, others will say non-dairy. Why do you want the dairy-free option if you want to go vegan? Because non-dairy simply means that, no, it doesn't have milk, in this product, but it does have a milk protein. So that's non-dairy according to the wording of the law, but that doesn't mean that that's dairy free. So that's why you wanna be very careful. Even if you say, well, I don't know the difference between dairy and non-dairy, even though I just explained it, hopefully, um, that's why you wanna read the label. Because if it is, for example, let's say something is uh, non-dairy, it will have that milk-based protein listed in the ingredient list. So even if I can't know all the bells and whistles, and, and it is hard because they're constantly changing the colors, you're trying to see what you can fit in your budget, and you're just trying to get out of the store, all those factors play against us. So that's why you got to take the time. If you just read the label and the ingredient list, it'll take you behind all of the hype and get you to what's inside the box. Now, in this instance, I like this example because what does it say? Brown rice flour, corn flour, cane sugar, pomegranate juice concentrate, sea salt. So if we were to give you a quiz right now, how many sugars are in this item? Now, before we start here, you say one, but hopefully now you'll say two because you see cane sugar. Obviously, that's one. But what's the other one? Pomegranate juice concentrate. Remember when you see that word concentrate, that's just another word for sugar, just like any word that ends in O-S-C or any times you see syrup, right? Now, another thing you want to notice too here is that it has an asterisk. This asterisk or these asterisks uh, are down here. I'm trying to find it. Uh, yes, right here. That means that these things are organic, produced in a facility that uses tree nuts, peanuts, and soy. So these manufacturers are taking the time to say, hey, this is organic, but be mindful that it is in a facility where there's nuts, peanuts, and soy. Why is this important? Because that is, if say, for example, if I'm gluten-free because I have celiac or some other um, allergen uh, situation, this could be a, a, a life or death situation. 
So it's not just a preferential thing. So you need to know that, yes, this is gluten-free, but remember, it was made in a facility, so it's not necessarily certified gluten-free. But it is just made with brown rice flour, which is a gluten-free flour. I hope that makes sense to you. So this is a gluten-free product, but it's not certified gluten-free because it was made in a facility where other gluten products were made. So if you're trying to go to that extreme, you want to make sure it's gluten-free certified. But if you're just trying to go gluten light or be gluten free, but you don't have the allergic reaction, then this would be more than enough for you. And it's in our case, this is something that would fit our bill for our family. Now, we know that all of us are at different stages in our journey. Right. But the whole point of this change health was so that wherever you are in your health journey, which for all of us should be better. Because we're not going to get best until we get to heaven, not until Beulah land, not until Canaan land. That's when we will have the absolute best. But until then, all of us want to be in a direction of going better. In that journey, you've got to become a snooper. You've got to become an ingredient reader. You'll be that guy. You're going to be that lady standing in line, hopefully not in line, in the aisle. And you're going through there like this. Don't forget your glasses. If you really can't see, get your cell phone, take a picture and zoom in because sometimes it is in small print intentionally because they don't want you to know what's in it because if you did, you probably wouldn't eat it. So I hope that this has encouraged all of us. The so next time you go on that grocery trip, there's another bonus tip too of your parents and you got children like we do who are growing readers. We got Jael, she's seven years old. You see a box like this, pass that box to her. Give it to your 12 year old, your 13 year old, your 15 year old. If they can't read what's in it, tell them they're not going to get it. <laughs> That's just a little game you can play, a little pro health game. So you want to say, OK, I'll buy it. But can you read what's in here? Because if you can't read it, then you should need it. But all jokes aside, you want to uh, last few tips as we wrap this thing up. The three label tips. We're going to go ahead and close out. Fewer and fresher, the better. In other words, the fewer the number of ingredients, the better. And the fresher that food is probably going to be. So that's another thing we're looking for. Shorter lists when comparing one thing with the other. A next thing, know your red flags. Know the things that you're looking to keep out of your diet. So if you're trying to bring that sugar down, you're trying to bring that gluten down, if you're trying to bring that bad fat up and perhaps increase that good fat, whatever the case might be, know your red flags and the names that those foods go by. Literally, you can go to every word on any ingredient list. And if you Google it or web search it, it will tell you the scientific name. It will tell you what, is, is, what it is and if anything else is in it. Know that you can do that now. Last but not least, go for what you can read. Look for names that you can pronounce. If something is multisyllabic, and super scientific where you got to have a graduate degree to even know what it is, why would you put that in your body? Now, some people might say, well, you know, Chris, that's too much or you're going too extreme. I want you to think about it like this. How much are you worth? Most of us have automobiles. And when you have that car, I know some of you have cars that you really appreciate and you're trying to be good stewards of and you only get supreme. You only get the premium. You bought the premium promise that this gas is better than any other gas and you will get angry. You get upset if anybody who put that regular or that regular unleaded in your fine tuned machine. Now, if we would get upset about how somebody would treat our car and that car is eventually going to rest, it's going to perish, it's going to not start one day. How much more, how much more are you worth? Jesus asked. If you're worth more than every sparrow put together in the world, aren't you worth the five seconds? Isn't your family worth the 10 seconds? of stopping, reading that bottle and say, Father, show me what's the best that I can put in my body with the money that you've given me and with the family that you've provided me. Even if you buy it for yourself, it's between you and your father and he wants to take care of you. And it only takes a matter of time to spend five seconds and making sure that that good food doesn't just look good, but it is good. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hope you feel empowered. If you got any questions or comments, make sure you drop them in that comment box. Always keep in touch with us. You can email uh, contact at changeministry.org or just go to the website, changeministry.org. 
click that little window down there below and you can immediately send us a text message and we'll be able to answer your question and even answer your question if you're standing in a supermarket so that all of us can make the best choices for our bodies.